I'll tell you something else that has improved the overall fan experience. That is the addition of Mr. Smiley Kaufman to the NBC golf broadcast team. He has been a complete breath of fresh air. He is bringing in younger audiences and it is exciting the, uh, the golf world with his commentary. And I'll tell you what, he's even reunited with uh, Mr. Kevin Kisner this week, live from the 17th hole at TPC Sawgrass for another one of his, uh, what is becoming quite the famed happy hours. So, uh, <laughs> Smiley, so good to have you on the desk. Uh, I know you've got a busy week, you've got all sorts happening. You joined us uh, yesterday as well, but so far, what's the last sort of three days look like for you here as you prepare? You know, just checking out the golf course, talking to the players. I think every player, when they get to TPC Sawgrass and to these facilities, it's the best week of the year to work on your game and to get excited about a big week ahead. Uh, but as you mentioned with the happy hour, I got my uh, running mate, Kevin Kisner, back. Uh, so done a little preparation for uh, 17 on Friday. And uh, yeah, we got a work cut out for us. Uh, we set a pretty high bar of, of what people to expect from us too. So we'll see uh, if we can live up to those expectations. Has done much prep as far as we know? We did zero prep last time. <laughs> Literally just, we didn't even know who was coming through. When they came through, we were just like, all right. Sometimes, sometimes that's the best television, man. <laughs> I tell you, it was, uh, you know, we, we immediately had a pretty good chemistry. I've always been uh, very close with Kevin Kisner. Uh, he's very easy to get along with, one of the uh, most liked PGA Tour players out there. So there was no surprise that uh, he was easy to kind of play off of on 16 that day. Where are you guys going to be located out here? Do you know exactly? I'm told uh, about 128 yards away, kind of right above the bend. So it's uh, probably the best seat in the house, I'd say, Mark. Is everybody going to have to stop? And you said last week that everybody has to wave to you. Does everybody have to stop now? Well, I'll tell you who's not going to stop. The guy that hits it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they got they're the stopping caddies. at the drop zone. Yeah, they, they're stopping at the drop zone. They, uh, the caddies will have their hands in their uh, yardage books trying to figure out how far away uh, that, that shot will play. And luckily, as a player here, you know, I never hit in the water, so I don't even know where the drop zone is. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I've, I've only hit one ball in my time in the water here, and but I can promise you that happy hour can very quickly turn into unhappy hour. <laughs> there you go. Very quickly on this hole. <laughs> And, and that, that's the only thing I'm concerned about for you, brother, down there. Hey, so what are the players saying this week? You've talked to a bunch of players. What are they saying right now about, about kind of the conditions and what's going on out there so far early this week? You know, uh, since the change uh, to March, I'd say one of the big question marks is how firm the greens are going to play. I think that's, that was the one big thing that I've heard from players is that the greens are still a little on the soft side. But they also said this is the fastest they've seen the greens on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday to this point. So we have the green speeds up. The firmness isn't quite there. You kind of expect that to change as the week goes on and the sub air starts sucking the moisture out of these greens. But also a little bit of rough on some holes like left of four is, what is, is just really brutal. You know, 14's always had some of the worst rough on the golf course. On the right side. Yeah, on yeah. the right. Um, and honestly, too, one of the things when I come back here and I see the golf course, the pine straw is it's very Augusta-like in how deep and, and thick it is to where, like, your footing gets all screwed up. It's so cushy. That's, it's cushiony. It's cushy. You, can, you yeah. can hit a ton of amazing shots from the pine straw, but you can also slip in an instant and hit a pine tree and hit it 50 yards behind you. <laughs> You know, Swiney, this is a legendary layout that Pete Dye and, of course, Alice Dye uh, put together, but it is not for the faint-hearted. And a lot of players come out here when they first make their first couple of appearances, and they just don't really like it. It takes a long time to learn this course. How did you prepare for this for this challenge? No, it, it definitely is, and it starts off the tee. You, you just have to be so committed to your targets out there because so many of the holes call for you to hit a fade, and then the next one calls for you to hit a draw off the tee. And so you have to hit all these types of different shots and you can't have any doubt. I think that's the one cool thing about this course that P. Dye makes you challenge the corners of these dog legs. And if you're able to challenge the corners and, and be on the correct side of the fairway, you're given a better angle into the green and a better scoring opportunity. So I would say that a lot of these guys on Monday through Wednesday are, are spending a lot of time just visualizing the shots they have to hit, what club it's gonna be, and just either hitting a draw and making sure it doesn't cross that line or not bailing out, because that's the one thing players don't want to do is get over these shots and have that moment of doubt and bail. So they want to be able to trust that they're going to be able to shape it the proper way. So were you superstitious at all in your preparation? Like, you never hit a ball in the water here. <laughs> what I want to know is, did you ever practice a shot from the drop area? I, 
Mark, I don't even know where the drop zone is. <laughs> and the same, Smart man. the same thing goes for like 12 at Augusta. Nobody ever nope. practices over there to the right because what nope. happens in the practice round if you go over there and you dump that one in the water? Then you're going to be thinking about that. So that's something you need to do when, you know, it's not a tournament week. Uh, you come here a little early, hit some shots from there. You make sure you know what it is because uh, I don't think you want to put a three or four balls down at the drop zone. That's just, that just shows a little sign of weakness, I'd say. Yes.